Hello, everyone. I am Chris Ciccone. I am the Fellowship Program Manager for um, Cleveland Clinic OBGYN fellow Fellowships. And I'm here to give you a tutorial of how to best use Zoom for interview recruitment season. This tutorial is completely about only to do with the breakout rooms and the logistics and things like that. It's not all the other stuff around recruitment like itineraries and um, and videos and all those sorts of things. So, so without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so the first thing you do when you are um, when you start with the whole Zoom piece process of um, setting up recruitment is to um, make the uh, sorry <laughs> make the uh, the meeting for your actual interview day or your mock day or however you're doing it. So the way you do that is you log into Zoom. And I'm logging in through the web just so that everybody can see it. It's pretty much the same. So you, when you log when you're logging through the web, you have to go over here to schedule a meeting. If you're logged in through the app, um, it automatically comes up on the screen there. So you name your meeting, interview, your time, your, so your date that you're doing it for, your time frame and then how long the duration is. Obviously, if you're doing this for recruitment day, you can you will do this for a long period, longer period than an hour. Um, the next piece is, um, oh, just so you know, the, the timing of this is not like exact. So it's not like you can't get into your meeting uh, before eight o'clock a.m. on this particular day. You can log in anytime you want. You can log in a few days early just to like test it. Um, and it won't hurt anything. You can log out and then log back in if you need to. So don't get too hung up on the timing. Also, if you go over on time, it's not going to hurt it either. So do not stress too much about that. Um, it will default to your time zone. Registration. I wouldn't require registration for this purpose because your outside candidates are not going to be able to register because most likely they do not have Zoom accounts. This meeting ID thing, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Originally, this was made for to make your life easier before things went all like COVID crazy. Um, so you um, so they had a personal meeting ID so that you could always have that meeting room number and you could give it to people that you worked with all the time and just say, oh, join my room, kind of like a, your office. Um, but when all the COVID went crazy. All the Zoom bombing started to happen. So one of their safeties they put in place is to generate automatically. So people couldn't put in random things and just join Zooms. So it doesn't really matter which one you use now because they put these other security things in place here. So you can put in a passcode. For me, for recruitment day, I take off the passcode because that's just one more thing that the candidates have to go and find to log into their information. And they're already getting like so much information from each program that I just try to make it as simple as possible for everybody. However, I highly recommend that you do uh, click this waiting room. What the waiting room does is that means as soon as the person will log into your meeting and then they'll sit in this kind of like cloud version of a waiting room by themselves, even though there's like 10 other people in the waiting room, um, they're sitting there by themselves and they don't see each other and they're just waiting for you to admit them into the regular meeting. That's a good thing to do and you'll see when we, we get into this. Um, because you can admit people based on like how ready they are and things like that. And you can also check off to see that there's the people waiting. So for me, what I do is I let all my, my faculty and trainees in first, get them all settled. And then once everybody is settled, then, um, then I let all the candidates in at once. So um, video, like I said, I try to make things as easy as possible. So you don't have to deal with the whole turn on your video, blah, blah, blah thing. Um, I just go ahead and say um, video should default to on. Now audio, I would say just like make it computer audio because you want to kind of force people to use their computers for this. Um, since they're going to be on extensively doing interviews and it's supposed to be like face to face. And if you use your phones, it just, you know, I would hate to do a phone like a 
one of these types of interviews and then just be looking at a little tiny phone screen. So, but I say both in case problems happen. So in case somebody's Wi-Fi went down or their, their computer crashed or whatever, just have this as a backup. And then for these other meeting options, there's all kinds of things you can do here. You can say, so I always say enable join before host. I do that because um, that will let people come into the meeting before you're ready to start it. Um, obviously, as coordinators, you guys are going to be in the meeting early. Um, but say something happens and I actually years ago, obviously before this sort of thing, I actually had an accident, like a pretty bad accident happened to me in the morning of an interview day and I rushed everything I could do to get there in time. I was still late and somebody had to cover for me until I got there. And it's that same kind of idea. You don't want like the whole world to stop just because you haven't made it there for whatever reason. Um, there is, so you can mute participants upon entry. You can do that if you want, that's up to you. I don't because I want to communicate with them. Um, this only authenticated users can join. That means that they have to have a Zoom account within your account. So obviously you want to do that because then the candidates wouldn't be able to get in. Um, breakout room pre-assigned. So you can do this. So you can create your breakout rooms ahead of time. It's completely up to you. Um, we'll go into more about the breakout make, making portion of this when we get into the actual meeting. I want to show you it in real time. So I'm going to unclick that. You can do it if you want. And but the thing is, I, I haven't tested this, to be honest. So I don't know if, like, for whatever reason, you have to, like, make new breakout rooms if you can recreate them as easily as you can when you're actually in it and doing it in the beginning. So I'm going to unclick it so I can teach you guys how to do it the other way. Um, and then I would highly recommend that you do not hit record meeting. I don't know why, like, everybody is, this is one of the common asked questions about recording. You can't really record people without their, authentication and then I tell people if they were here in person interviewing would you be recording them no you wouldn't so obviously don't hit that and then you're going to click save and then it's going to make this little media invite so you can automatically add it to your your own outlook calendar if you do outlook or whatever version you do and it's going to download it into like a little invite thing and then you could say okay Save and close, and I'm actually going to invite an attendee, myself, so that I can have a participant. Okay, so now everything is all set. So when it's time to start your meeting, you will go over here, and there's your little invite, and you will click to join it. So when I give the people this, this is the link that I save for everything. You could probably, if you want to, um, you know, do copy from this to this, because that's the phone number that they may have to dial in on. Um, but that's the information you want to give to um, to your candidates and your faculty and anybody else that's supposed to be in that meeting, like your trainings. Okay. So. Now, you have to be logged in as the host. So whatever account you use to sign into this and make this meeting, you have to be signed in on the day of the event. And you want to be host um, because otherwise these functions that I'm about to show you are not going to work. So I'm going to say start this meeting. Sorry, this stupid institution is not really happy with um, the app. So you can also join from browser right here. Which is what we're going to do. OK. Bear with me a moment here. Well, I log in with my other make believe person. So join audio by computer. And there we have it. So you can see my screen here. Now, oh, I'm actually not going to turn on my camera on the Zoom because I want to keep it on, on the Teams. So if you're doing this fancy stuff that I'm doing right now, keep in mind you can only 
you can only have your camera and microphone. You can only have your camera on in one of the things. You can have your microphone on both, but they could echo. Which I don't know if it's echoing on me right now, but I'm gonna mute the zoom just to be sure. So give me a moment while I'm vlogging. I just kind of wanted to show you this real time, so. Okay, so now you heard that little ringing. I'm sure you heard. So that means we have somebody waiting in the waiting room. You get like a little, doesn't sound like a doorbell, it's just like a little notification, which is weird. You'd think that'd be the doorbell. So if you click Manage Participants, you will get the sidebar here that has your, your current participants. And you see up here in the waiting room, you can see the actual candidate that's waiting there for me. So I'm going to admit that person. And here they come. So now my person is in here. So what I do before, actually even before I admit that person, I go ahead and make my breakout room. So I log in early enough that I'm comfortable for me, half hour is fine, only just because I've just been doing this so much. So it goes pretty quickly for me, but you may want to log in a little sooner, but you are going to next, just make, out, make your breakout rooms initially before anybody gets there. So that way you, you do it in a calm manner and you don't feel rushed and not too many people are asking questions. Because I can tell you that and the most stressful point is when you start admitting people up until you start the interviews. Just because you're just trying to, things are kind of rolling all over. Candidates may be asking you questions. Faculty and trainees may be asking you questions, especially if you had not done a, a like um, practice session with them. So you just want to like make sure that you like, you want to plan for your stress as much as possible. So for me, I come in early, half hour early, I make my breakout rooms. So you click down there to make the breakout rooms. And then um, we decide, ignore this whole one participant because it's probably going to be like zero because you're doing it early. So you want to make your rooms. So look at your schedule, whatever your schedule is based on and how many rooms. So think of it this way. Take out the whole virtuality of the whole thing for a moment so that you don't like overwhelm yourself with this whole I don't understand this piece of it pretend you're in person and pretend these interviews are in, are in person and you know you usually set up where they're actually going to be interviewing at like when the within their offices so you know you're going to have I don't know six sessions we'll say and then um so you know you're going to have like six rooms um based on your schedule so that's where you'd say I want six rooms because there's six different groups of interviewing people whether it be individual like one-on-one -on -one interviews or if you're going to do team interviews like two three or more to one candidate and that's how you um figure out how many rooms now i do want to say a little tip that i want to give you and you're going to understand it a little bit later um is that whatever room, amount of um interview rooms that you have add one more we're going to call that an overflow room right now it's not going to make any sense to you at all until you get into practicing and then you're going to understand why you need that overflow room Everybody always does that to me and then they're like, they're like, wait a minute, I don't understand. And then when they get into it, then they realize it. So just listen to my advice. Um, also, you need to factor in, say, if you had six different actual interview sessions with your faculty and, and what have you. Um, remember, if you have a session where they're going to spend time with your residents or your fellows or, you know, whatever like maybe you might do some fun session in there or something like that. Um, remember, you need to add a room for that. Don't worry if you don't make enough rooms here. There's a way to um, to make more while you're in it. The other big thing here is do not say automatically because what would happen is all the people that you have over here in the participant list um, will automatically randomly based on whatever Zoom schema is at that moment, um, 
throw people into rooms. 